Hey guys, it's Brian and welcome to my shop. So hey, this is gonna be video number six in my do-it-yourself supercar build series. Uh, video number five covered this uh, frame that I'm currently sitting in, this rolling chassis. Video number six is gonna cover the problems with that frame and hopefully how I'm fixing them. So what are the problems? Well, in a nutshell, I just don't have enough leg room. I built this frame based on uh, dimensions of a Lamborghini Aventador. So it's 106.7 uh, wheelbase. This is 106. 0.5 wheelbase, so I thought for sure I'd basically be able to have enough space inside the cabin given the fact that they actually have a longer and larger engine. Well, I was wrong. My suspension mount points, I'm using the Corvette uh, subcradles for my suspension points, are just not cooperating, especially in the front with me. So what I'm going to have to do is, is think of a new way to mount that front end. I'm going to have to probably cut that off and certainly re-weld uh, it on. But also, I think I can actually maybe get an inch or two just by moving this firewall back. But I won't know that until I actually get the engine mounted up. If you go way back in the video series, you can actually see where I cut the frame rails off. And there is quite a bit of space uh, between the firewall and the frame rail. Uh, I'm sorry, between the firewall and the motor. So really, I think that's going to be the first thing I need to do is get the motor mounted and see if I can move this firewall back before I start hacking up the front end. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to do a quick review on the rear frame section here that I created, just so everybody's on the same page if you haven't watched all the videos. So what we've got going on here, this is a Corvette C7 cradle, and that has made it to these Manderley bent uh, 2x4s. They have a 19 inch drop from here down to the bottom of the frame rail, and that gives us a ground clearance of about 4.5 inches. The, what I've done here though is, even though with the ground clearance lower than a standard Corvette, because I've actually preserved the actual ride height, um, they, this car is actually going to handle or, or has the same characteristics as the Corvette, just it has a much lower center of gravity. Uh, what I've got this is, is a temporary setup to mimic the coilovers that will ultimately be in here. They're going to be a cantilevered coilover suspension. So what that means is there'll be a bell crank right here that actually in the shock I think is going to go right in there. Temporarily though, I've just got this thread all in here, which is currently holding the car at the right right height. That's important so when I go ahead and mount this motor in here, that we can see kind of the, the clearances and so forth. So, when I actually did create this frame, I just went ahead and used solid pieces for the front and the back when I attached the cradle. Those need to be cut. And now the, the big thing. Um, been doing a lot of thinking on this and I am going to cut, cut the sub cradle itself and I'm going to have to then come up with some plate mechanism to reconnect it. The reason for that is I want the motor to sit lower. I know in the video I said that I was probably not going to do that but uh, well as time's gone on I just really want that motor to sit a little bit lower get that CV joint out. The other thing I think that's going to help with is this firewall because if the motor sits a little lower then I'm also able to kind of maybe push this in a little bit, give a little more uh, back head clearance. So we'll see if that, uh, see what that's gonna do. But uh, so really, let's go ahead and start cutting. that I spent literally days making, so hopefully that's uh, not gonna come back to bite me any. Anyway, so uh, where we stand right now, I've got the frame uh, cross members cut as well as a sub cradle cut. So I'm gonna bring the Coyote motor over here, get that in here as well with the transmission and get that placed as low as possible. We'll have to see how far we can get down to these frame rails. Um, ultimately, remember though, the goal is to see if we can push this firewall any further forward to create a little bit more cabin room. But I'm going to go ahead and mount the engine and transmission, uh, well, I don't say permanently, but I'm going to weld up the actual mount points for the trans mount as well as the engine mount. And that way I'll, uh, this frame will be the one for the Coyote, the other frame will be for the Tesla. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get that motor over here and get that situated and see what we can do. I'm done. Uh, well, only, I can only wish. So, a little bit lonely today. Uh, my assistant, Dead Bob, he's not in the shop with me. He's actually on a road trip. 
uh, with some friends of mine who are actually making airplanes. So you think I'm nutty making a car. They're making planes. That's completely different realm of nuttiness. All right, so anyway, the problem that we're trying to solve, as you remember, is I need more cabin leg room. So one thing I did, I screwed up. So when I put this wall up here, the firewall, I thought it was supposed to go on the inside edge of this uh, rail here. It was actually supposed to go on the outside edge. So when I had the motor in, put it up, magically, I got two more inches in the cabin. <laughs> so that's pretty easy. Next up, uh, originally I had the transaxle axles lined up to go across this plane right here. So what I did is I moved them back about two degrees and that's fine. It's, it's actually not very much room or not very much deflection on those axles at all. And what that actually gave me is another half inch or so. So now we're at about two and a half inches of the four inches I was looking for to actually fix my interior cavern problem. So the rest of it's gonna have to come out from the front. Uh, so what I did here is I went ahead and made a mount for the transaxle. I gotta make a mount for the, for the actual engines itself. What, how I did that though is I had the, uh, with the Ford motor uh, kit, the installation kit came the actual uh, motor mounts. So I went ahead and used those as trans mounts. Uh, why? Because they actually fit perfectly into a four inch pipe. So that meant uh, mounting it was pretty straightforward. I'll actually give you a close up of that here um, in a second. But uh, the other weird thing about this transaxle is it's actually not symmetrical. It actually sits off to the uh, one side. I think that was originally in the design. If I look at a Gallardo, this was an all wheel drive. I think the whole system actually kind of set more towards the uh, one side than the other and that allowed the axle to go down the center tube. Not 100% sure on that, but that's uh, kind of my thought process anyway. So anyway, I've got it all lined up. Uh, Transmission, transmission is actually holded in or bolted in. Uh, it's actually being held with these clamps right now. I got to tap that and get those mounted. I got to create the motor mount positions for the front. Uh, I'm actually waiting on the motor mounts. I had to order them since I stole them for the back. And then I will start hacking up the front and getting the other two inches I need to make sure we have enough feet room. One thing you might notice in the video here, you'll see these, uh, these uh, little points here. The suspension points so why not make it a little bit more challenging for myself and come up with a cantilevered suspension <laughs> yeah that's a great idea <laughs> like i don't have enough work to do already well anyway so that's what's going to happen here so these these are actually going to be push rods and it'll, it'll affect the bell crank and that bell crank will actually have the shock most likely in this position uh, i've got to put up the exhaust system i don't think i'm going to be able to run a diagonal because the exhaust should actually kind of be right there but it'll go along the chassis rail here so it'll look cool hopefully it works good so anyway why don't i give you a bit of a close-up now of uh, what we got going on So here is the sub cradle from car number two. This is obviously the one that, that I have not butchered and chopped into a billion pieces. So what I need to do is use this sub cradle though and create new uh, connection points for the cut cradle I did cut up. Right here, these points here are where the leaf spring was for the uh, car. So what I'm gonna do is, is use these two reference points to create a cross member. And then also I'm gonna use these other reference points here to create a second cross member. That should stiffen the cradle back up again. And if, but if I'm still worried about it, there's actually some pickup points on the back side of this as well. So I can either make another brace that goes across there, or I can make some kind of attachment that goes to the, uh, the mount that I made for the transmission. So we'll see on that part. So what we need to do first is get this part over to the uh, welding table and get some steel laid out and go ahead and kind of fabricate this up. So let's go to that now. So I went ahead and made up these nice brackets here. They're made out of a two by two angle iron and then I gusseted each corner and obviously drilled them and they now sit perfectly over the spots of those four holes. So the next step is I've got to take some inch and a half dome tubing and make some, uh, make a nice X across this. Uh, that'll obviously is supposed to mimic this piece here. 
To mimic this back part here, what I'm going to do is actually attach the dome tubing with some additional dome tubing to the trans mount that I made up earlier. So that will basically uh, cover this and this piece and back uh, and get the car basically back to whole. So let me go ahead and start cutting at it and get that welded in place. So I finalized the actual cradle here, and here it is. You can see it's still attached to the, uh, to the chassis or the jig cradle. This is the one that's going to go in the other car, so it isn't cut up. But we've got a cross member here that replaces this cross member. This cross member replaces this cross member through these two tubes. So if you kind of take a look at this like that. And then these pockets here are for the trans mounts, uh, the actual motor mounts that I'm using, the uh, Mustang motor mounts that I'm using. So this is going to go off to the powder coater and be back hopefully in a couple days and we'll get continue on the build. So I got the subframe to the subframe in. I guess that's what I'm going to call this part because it's a subframe for the subcradle really. Anyway, I think this is a good stopping point for this video. In the next video, I'm going to cover mounting up the actual motors. I got the, the motor mounts arriving any day now. And I'm also going to chop the front end off and basically start that over from scratch. So that's uh, a little depressing, but at the same point, I, I didn't really like the leftover C6 anyway. So I'm actually going to make everything up from scratch myself. So as always, if you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing. And thanks for watching.